one inch of snow in Western Pennsylvania, Western. I, I just turned the recording on. Yes. Um, <laughs> Hi, everybody. This is Mary Lindsay Wilson, and I am welcoming you all to the Lone Star Dowsers. You're in for a treat tonight. We have Amelia Loomis, and she's currently the president of the Idaho Society of Dowsers. And Amelia is an MSW and a CCHT. She's also a retired therapist, hypnotherapist, grant maker, and a longtime dowser and intuitive. She's the co-founder and president of Earthwater Alliance, which is a 501c3 nonprofit, which focuses on creating and advancing alliances that support our sacred relationship with the earth. The Earthwater Alliance promotes sacred ecology and environmental sustainability throughout the world. Its charitable fund provides clean water and sanitation to underserved populations in an ecologically sustainable way. So you can find out more about that at earthwater, earthwateralliance.org. And she's also the president of um, the Idaho Society of Dowsers. And not only has she, um, been president of the Idaho Society of Dowsers. Her service to dowsing has spanned three states, including um, co-founding the Hamilton, Montana chapter, and um, she's activated the Idaho chapter. So Amelia is going to teach us tonight about embodying your intuition with dowsing and other methods. And she's going to share about how to perceive and teach ourselves to recognize subtle body sensations to get the deeper part of ourselves and to receive moment to moment guidance from our bodies. So I don't know about you, but I'm pretty excited to learn more about this. So welcome, Amelia. Thank you, Mary, uh, for inviting me to share my experience in the realm of embodied intuition. Smart sensing, which is a term that I've created, as well as dowsing. Um, let me give you just a little bit of background about myself. I learned to douse probably close to 25 years ago. And that was my first introduction to the intuition. I really had denied that part of myself. And even though I was making decisions with um, intuition, I had no idea that I was doing it. And, uh, and that's where I started. And I was ill and a woman helped me uh, from the internet who was a dowser. And after about six months of counseling with her about my health issues, I um, said to her, well, what is this pendulum business? Because that's what she was using. And she said, go to a metaphysical bookstore buy a pendulum, buy a book on how to use it and join the Dowser Society. And I did. And I sat down in a chair one night with the book and it said how to hold it. And I held it that way. And uh, then it said, think yes and watch how it moves. And the thing moved. That was the most incredible shift in my paradigm about uh, energy, energy medicine, the energy world, I really couldn't believe it. And so I kept practicing and practicing on different foods that I could eat. Um, and in the process, I really learned to douse and I joined the um, a dowsers group in uh, California. That's how it started for me. And I was very rigorous about it. And I soon, soon learned how to balance my chakras. And, uh, but what I didn't do is I never quite integrated all of this. At the same time, I was uh, training in hypnotherapy. Uh, I joined the energy psychology organization. And as I went to each of these places, whether it was dowsers conferences or uh, an energy medicine uh, conference. And I was also on the board of the American College of Traditional Chinese Medicine. And each time I was confronted with a different sort of theoretical framework of how life works, I would uh, puzzle 
about how completely sure of whoever was giving me a presentation that they were right. And I began working on the integration of these systems. And that's how I really developed a more comprehensive perception and um, skill base related to a wide variety of ways of knowing. Then when um, a number of us uh, worked together related to the American Society of Dowsers um, Water for Humanity, which they closed out, they no longer do the Water for Humanity. There were a number of us that got together on a conference call and agreed to a group decision-making process on a scale from one to 10. And that's how we picked the name of the earthwateralliance.org. And it was such a fascinating experience because we weren't on Zoom, we didn't see each other, we just heard each other. And so we would ask a question and then uh, we would let everybody just speak out. They didn't even have to go in, you know, in any particular order. And it was either five, three, two, seven, and we would dash that idea. Okay, wait, so I'm gonna just clarify for a minute. So you're, you were, um, as a group, asking a question, um, what's the best name, you know, what does this resonate um, to, what is this a harmonious name or beneficial name? Something like that, you'd ask yes, a so question the highest and everybody- and best, Yes. It was for the highest and best good. And so we took each, each word and then put them together after we had gotten the uh, yes the, on a scale from one to 10. And so people were calling out. And then when we got to the word earth, it was 10, 10 with goosebumps, 10, 10 with goosebumps. It was so distinctly different when it was the consensus highest and best good and that and then we did it with water and and then we had quite a time with the word alliance because we were talking about networks and a number of things none of them reached it until we used the word alliance and then it was 10 10 with goosebumps it's interesting how many people shared it that way and that's how we determined the um, name of Earth Water Alliance. And then as the board continued in their role, we only made decisions when we got either a 9.5 or a 10. And each of us was dowsing or intuiting in our own way, but we were all, and, and what we did, we didn't feel we were wrong when we got lower numbers we believed that we needed to know more. So we weren't uh, in conflict with each other when we, one person would, let's say, get a three and another would get a seven. It would be an indicator to us that we were needing to know more. For instance, maybe we weren't supposed to make that decision now. Maybe we're supposed to make it later. And so we might go into numbers. When do we need to make this decision? Days, weeks, months, years. So we were always working in a consensus mode using our dowsing intuitive skills to get numbers. And that was a very specific process that we used. Well, and I think asking the right question probably played a big part in it as well. Yes, and that was sometimes what the problem was. We weren't asking the right question. And so, when you have several people together working on consensus through a dowsing process, one of them is going to say, you know, I'm, I'm getting where, you know, we're not even asking the right question. And then we would check that. So it was a back and forth process that would, but when we all got 10 on something, we, were new, we knew we were on the right track. And that's how we made group decisions. And that's, the essence of, of how I make 
my individual decisions. So let me go through some of the ways that I have discovered that dowsers on average are pretty uh, kinesthetic, meaning into the body. Um, and uh, there are others who are very, very visual. Um, I was going to ask people to show hands for those that had one modality uh, as opposed to another. There are a lot of people that are not um, showing you know, their video. So that's gonna be a bit challenging. Um, so let me just go through some of the- We can, uh, we can have people um, put in the chat if they feel they're more, um, what is it, visual or um, kinesthetic or auditory? Well, the questions I'm going to ask, so we'll just see how it works out. I, okay. I think it'll be hard in the chat if people are on their phones, because uh, my experience is it's hard to do chat on the phone. So let's just see where this takes us. Um, okay. I can show everybody. Sometimes it's a little distracting because you, you maybe can't see everybody that's at the same time if that makes sense yeah i think what i'll do is just i will go through the methods and whether you are on video or not you can still work you can still understand this without even being on video and even if you're on your phone so let's just do that um and i guess if you want to raise your hand raise your hand <laughs> raise your hand physically or however there's a raising the hand on zoom too Yes, I welcome your comments throughout. Uh, so let's start with skin moisture. This is one that some dowsers know. Um, and this is called the galvanic skin response. It's used as one measure of truth in the lie detector test. Each person can check their own skin moisture uh, slick or sticky in several ways. So we, do, but if you go online, you will find a whole industry of machines that are checking your skin moisture. You can spend thousands of dollars on those machines uh, because the light, that is one of the indicators in the lie detector test. And it, the truth doesn't work really well if you're a psychopath or else it works extremely well and you never make mistakes because psychopaths don't put forward a moisturing um, that is is in truth so it has something to do with one's personality uh, I haven't read studies on sociopathic uh, but I'm not going to also suggest that if you if you can't do this, that you're a psychopath or a sociopath, so forget that. But the bottom line is that for the average person, your skin does get slicker when you're in truth. And if you're good at questions, it's even better in terms of getting yeses and nos. Um, so let's just run through some of these. If you rub your thumb against the index finger or, or maybe the index and the third finger, uh, while speaking a truth like my full name is, and then fill that in with the truth, my full name is, and I'd like you to each try that. My full name is, and notice the amount of slickness, and then say, my full name is Smokey the Bear. See if you notice a difference. A little stickier for me. Yes. I'm seeing lots of head nodding. So yeah. Yeah. You can also do this with both hands, rubbing your hands together uh, while saying a truth and then a falsehood. So try that one. My full name is. My full name is Smokey the Bear. Yeah, a little, a little subtler. 
And each person is going to experience this a little differently. Uh, some it may be profound, others it may not be, but it's a subtlety. Um, the other thing you can do, and you probably notice there are times on your phone where it was so sticky that you couldn't even run, run across the glass. Um, that was probably an indicator that you need to pay attention to something else. Um, but you can do the same thing, rubbing your finger on your, on glass, like on your phone, and uh, the moisture will be that. So I'll pause for just a second for those who have a phone or something else they want to, a piece of uh, glass or something really smooth. It doesn't have to be glass, but you can just notice my full name is. My full name is Smokey the Bear. I could not perceive a difference on that one. And could anybody else in a hand, if anybody else that could perceive a difference with the glass? I'm seeing head shaking. Okay. No. Good, good. So it's really fun to notice that when you're on your phone and that happens and pause and listen internally to what that's about. Another is, is of course, one that is used a lot in our uh, therapies, uh, muscle testing or kinesiology. I first experienced that with a chiropractor, but now it's used for the entire energy psychology um, group. Um, in the training that I took in energy psychology, uh, they would use it by pushing against the client's arm. Uh, is it for the highest and best good for X person to do this or do that in terms of next steps or next therapies. Um, but again, because of my dowsing and my belief that we can learn how to listen to our own bodies, we don't have to go to uh, an expert, we can train ourselves to listen deeply. So, and I know that some of you are very familiar with these techniques. I'll just run through them. The O-ring is two hands together. And again, you're gonna feel more strength and truth and less in falsehood. So let's just try that. My full name is, notice the strength. You, you don't have to pull too hard. It's about your strength. Um, can be very subtle about it. My full name is Smokey the Bear. There's a there's less strength in falsehood or a lie. Now that I've said that, I want you to know that sometimes we are reversed. And this is a concept that has been really developed in energy psychology, reversals. And um, there will be an opposite effect. And uh, it doesn't mean you're, it just means you're different. It doesn't mean you're better, lesser, anything. Um, Claire has a, would like a little clarity on that. So, so you, you're using your uh, pointer finger and your thumb to do the your middle, rate. yeah, your middle finger and your thumb. Your middle finger, okay. Now it's a good. You could probably do it with any finger, mm -hmm. uh, whatever is comfortable. Mm -hmm. But usually, um, it's been taught as the middle finger and the thumb. But it doesn't matter. I mean, and what matters is what's comfortable to you, and you may want to try it both ways, because okay. what you're doing is what they're doing when they're pressing on your arm. They're telling you you know, don't try to be tough. This isn't about that. It's about you just noticing how much strength you have when you're in truth and how much strength you have when you're in falsehood. It's a great way to put it.
Now I do something, uh, well, I'll get to that in a moment. Now there's also the single hand press. So let's say you're, you're driving, you're not going to be letting both hands off the steering wheel. But a lot of people use another way to test their muscle strength. They push their middle finger to the index finger and notice how much strength there is. So once again, let's just pause for a minute. My full name is Amelia Beth Loomis. And I can feel strength in there. You see me kind of going down, but my full name is Smokey the Bear. It went way, way down. Yeah. And for those of you that are wondering, um, this is also, some people call this deviceless dowsing. So if you don't the have whole, your pendulum or your rod available, this is deviceless dowsing. That is, that is a term that has been coined by dowsers. And I found that a frustrating term as I began to learn all the other ways of knowing because it was like using a device was better there was a value placed on it and there was not an emphasis on as many of the ways as I'm going to show you. But yes, that is what dowsers say. It is deviceless dowsing to a well, dowser. I, I saw that on a, um, a dowsing conference and I'm like, I'm gonna have to see this. I have no idea what is deviceless dowsing. And, and then, then I learned more about that. So yeah, I guess it's yeah. just good for us all to know there are multiple ways to douse and um, receive information that's um, beneficial to us and others. Yes. And, and so I have used the word, I've used dowsing for so long, uh, it'll probably be in my vocabulary till the very end of this life. Uh, but I prefer conceptually thinking about it as precision intuition. Because what we know about dowsing is that people get very, very precise. They can do a chart. Uh, they can do numbers, zero, one, two, three, four, five, uh, percentages. Uh, there's a precision to dowsing. Whatever specialty you're in, let's say you're a water dowser, you get very precise about gallons per minute, et cetera. I mean, any question can help you understand water dowsing. By the same time, metaphysical. You can ask how many guides you have, numbers. You can ask, uh, really, you know, you can say, is my guide an ancestor? Is my guide um, an animal spirit? I, I mean, so the, you're, there is a term in dowsing that uh, there are no wrong answers, just wrong questions. And I think that's a really important concept is that we're only limited by our own questions. And of course, one of those questions is, do I have permission to ask about this? Yes. Um, very, very important. We are connected to a universe that knows more about what we need to know than we do. And if we're engaged with them and listening to them, they're going to give us what we need in the present moment. And if we uh, take an ego-driven method to want to know, because we want to know, and it isn't in divine timing, uh, you know, they'll get frustrated with us and give us answers that aren't even true. And so there is an attitude of humility and willingness to follow this incredible path of knowing. And it's really essential that we keep that in mind uh, and not demanding. And I find that for me, it's I call it present moment dowsing. I don't go into the future to predict. Sometimes I'm guided to ask questions about the future if there's something I'm supposed to be doing now. 
but it always brings me back to the, the now, the present moment. What do I need to know or do about something? Like if I'm, I know I'm going to be making a trip, maybe I need to do certain things before I go. So I'm, I'm always asking in the context of, do I need to know more about this now? Do I need to pay attention to something else before I uh, focus on this? What do I need to do next? What do I need to do next? And I find that in that process, I may be using everything from a pendulum to what I'm gonna tell you about next, uh, since I think we've covered the uh, finger press, um, journaling. Journaling is another way of uh, being in the, kines in the kinesiology mode. Uh, you can turn your hand over and literally get messages from the other side. Uh, you can even use a pen as a pendulum. You can say, do I need to know more? Yes. No, it won't move. I mean, there are so many objects that we can use with our fingers and our hands to get more information. So journaling, some people believe that they can get better information from the other side or from their subconscious if they use their non-dominant hand. That has not been the case for me, uh, but it, it, there are many who believe that they get more information with their non-dominant hand. So it would be interesting, I think, for people to speak on that. How many of you do journaling in an intuitive way where you're bringing in a message. I definitely do. <laughs> Great. And do how many of you use your non-dominant hand to do that? I am not so isn't that is. interesting? I, I have. I have done that. Um, find it a little hard to read. It it feels very. Um, it's not as much information as your dominant hand. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know where, you know, where that, I don't know where that came from, but I've heard it taught a lot at psychic conferences. And I'm thinking, oh, this, this just doesn't feel right for me. Um, we can also ask our body to move in different ways um, for a conversation. And one of those is just to ask our body to move where it needs to move. And when I do that, I may, I may be walking one way or moving through the house one way. And when I say, please take me where I need to go next, I may take and turn and around and go the other way. It's a fun one to practice. We won't do it today. But it is a fun one to practice because you can essentially turn your entire body into a pendulum. And it's, uh, it's amazing. What, what would be an example? Like maybe you walk into, you're heading to the bedroom and you ask, where do I need to move my body now? And it takes you to the kitchen. Is that That's because right. maybe you, you forgot something in there or is it, do you ever get to the kitchen and wonder, <laughs> I get to what, what am I, I doing the, here? <laughs> I get to the kitchen and I say, "What do you want me to pay attention to now?" And I learned this technique in one of the journal articles in the American Society of Dowsers years ago. Is that you can literally turn your eyes into a dowsing instrument. You can stand there and say, "Please take my eyes and show me what I need to pay attention to," and your eyes will literally go to a different direction. Wow. It is amazing. Practice this. I do believe that this is part of, but spoken of very differently. You've heard of mindfulness meditation where people walk and, and a, you know, stay in the flow. Well, I think this is more the dowsers way of using their body to do that. But you could probably take a class on mindfulness 
meditation and you'd be ahead of the game because it's really the key really is the question what do i need to pay attention to next what what do you, what do i it's a it's a dialogue with your guides it's a dialogue with your um body um and and so the the the, the essence of all of this is that your questions can produce answers in a number of ways. I find that, for instance, one of the things that happens with me when people are talking is all of a sudden I will say, I'm getting hands clapping because I've allowed my body to talk. And um, hypnotherapists have a technique that I'm going to share with you. And some will call it idiomotor from the subconscious but you can do it consciously. You can sit in a chair quietly in a meditative, relaxed state with your hands on each uh, thigh and say, please show me a yes with one of my fingers or one of my hands. Please show me a yes with one of my fingers or one of my hands. Just do that now. Please show me a yes with one of my fingers or one of my hands. And you may experience just a slight movement, maybe not much, but you'll just notice that one finger or one hand is moving for a yes. And then you can say, please show me a no with one of my fingers or one of my hands. Please show me a no with one of my fingers or one of my hands. That is very interesting. Um, I had a finger lift immediately um, on the yes. Yeah, and the no. Um, yeah, I have not tried that. Um, so that's idiomotor. That's what hypnotherapists call it. If you go on uh, Wikipedia, you will notice that all dowsing is considered idiomotor, idea to motor. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, they discount that the pendulum is really moving in any kind of an auric field, that it's really only moving because your fingers and body is moving. So you know, this, is, this is where our society does not accept the fact that there is energy flowing around us as well as in our body. And, um, and that's why I'm putting so much emphasis on uh, these body movements because they're not as hard for people to accept. If you try to teach a lot of people how to douse with the pendulum, for instance, it freaks them out because they can't understand how this pendulum would be moving. Um, someone has written in the chat, um, and maybe you're going to get to this, but the, um, you know, uh, leaning forward and back, um, you know, the yes. yes is usually forward and back is no, like, if I want to be discreet in the vitamin aisle, you know, and I don't want to whip out my pendulum, I'll just hold something, you know, next to my body and, you know, ask, is it good? You know, would this be beneficial for my body? And, and I'll get a clear yes or no. Yes. Exactly. And so right now you could say my full name is, and if it's truth, your body will move forward. If it's a falsehood, there'll be a slight backward movement. And, uh, and so that is another one. This is why it's so much fun because you can practice these different methods and then see what works for you. My go-to is the hand movement. And, um, Somehow I was taught that by the universe years before I took the hypnotherapy training. And I was astounded that that's what they were using uh, because they didn't want to bring the person out of the alpha state to answer a question. They would just tell the person's body move, you know, this finger or that. And, um, that's my go-to because I can be driving and I'll, you know, get a little message. 
Uh, I can be in a grocery store. Nobody knows what I'm doing. It is a little bit, you know, my hands do move. <laughs> sometimes a lot, sometimes not. And that's when the hands clapping, if it's a super yes, oh. will happen for me. You could definitely teach this to kids to tune in and be aware of their bodies. And how fun would that be? Um. I've been doing some of that with my eight-year-old grandson. And it's, it's, it's you know, it's good. It's the challenge is the practice of the question. That's the challenge with all of this is what do we ask? How do we ask? When do we ask? Um, and yes, these are, I mean, the body speaks to us. I mean, what's body language about? Uh, and, and this is really not any different. You know, when we are getting a super no and we gotta be protected, we do this, we cross our legs, we cross our arms, we wanna be protected. Um, and so the world speaks, uh, we speak through our bodies. And um, I think that the, the most important thing is that we use this, these techniques to get into deep truth I can sit watching the news and know what I'm being lied to. Oh, how interesting. Yep. I think that is essential that we learn to <laughs> check that out while we're listening to somebody. While people are doing this, we'll be right. going like this. <laughs> <laughs> See how many times your hands go like this. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> mm. Yes. Yes, practice watching the news, practice uh, listening to others in, you know, a speech or something and allow yourself to have fun with this. It's, you know, and loosen up and, and listen. I started doing it when I, I found out about SARS-CoV-2, which is the name of the virus as opposed to the illness or which is uh, COVID. Um, and I would stop when, when there was a delivery at the door from, uh, you know, from a UPS truck or a FedEx truck, I would look at that package and I would say, is there any SARS-CoV-2 around this package? And there were two or three times when I got a super yes. And so we left that package alone. My husband sprayed it off with alcohol. And, and it, I think it was one UPS driver because it happened a couple of times, you know, like a day or so after each other. And then I didn't notice it. But I, I will go into a room of people and I will say, is there any SARS-CoV-2 spreader in this room? And I will say SARS-CoV-2 or its variants. Is there any spreader? And that happened at a birthday party the other day. I didn't say anything to anybody because it would have, it just wouldn't have worked to do that. I didn't you know, tell my grandson it was a skateboarding birthday party, but there was one mother and the child. I didn't even know they were related. Uh, in the beginning, but it was really clear that I needed to stay away from them. There was a lot of fresh air. Um, some people were wearing masks. I got that I didn't need to wear a mask when I was outside, but I was just aware and it kept coming up. Yes, just stay away from them. Just you know, move the other direction. If they're coming this way, you go that way. And so it's really helped me in to be comfortable and not so uptight about my fear related to uh, getting COVID because I'm 80 years old and I just, and I've got some illness, uh, you know, that would be considered high risk. And uh, now I've had the vaccination, the Pfizer vaccination. So I'm not as concerned now but I'm staying in my body, this embodied intuition of, hmm, do I need to ask about that now? Yes. Did you, what questions did you ask um, for yourself personally about 
getting the vaccination or did you ask questions? Oh, absolutely. I asked, <laughs> do I need to get the vaccination? Yes. Big, big yes. Big yes. And I was, uh, you know, a lot of our friends and associates are anti-vaxxers and, you know, that's their choice. That's their choice. But when I ask, does my body need that vaccination and I get a super yes, I listen to my body. I don't listen to a, a you know, a, a theory, a logic that works for somebody else. I listen to my body. And if I had a child, I would ask it about my child because they're underage, but um, this is something I believe everybody has to do for themselves. And I get really frustrated with going to dowsers meetings where we're being told this is the right way. I, I really think we have to douse slash use our precision intuition to get our answers. We're each individual. Some of us may be allergic to something. Some of us, uh, you know, there could be a variety of reasons why some people would get no and some people would get yes. So let's respect that. Let's respect that and, and encourage people to seek their own guidance, their own knowing and not one size fits all. Because as dowsers, that's what we believe, that we have the ability to know directly, not through a, you know, any other authority figure. And I think that's the beauty of dowsing. And I think that's why it tends to be discounted by the authoritarian world, because they want us to follow in footstep, you know. They don't want us to be out there saying, I, I, you know, my truth is this, my truth is that. Right. Well, let me ask you this. So would, have you found there is an occasion when your body um, didn't give you the correct information or, um, you know, instances where that wasn't, I guess, accurate? Um, if I'm, if I'm, um, I really believe that most of all of our intuition is coming from our alpha range. Uh, the Q and A brings in the beta, but if we're relaxed and connected and we ask for permission to ask for something, um, I respect when I'm told, no, this is not the time to, to ask about that. If I get a yes, that this is the time to ask about X, Y, or Z, then I practice this for years. I've tested it for years. I trust it. But I think there is a period of trust. This is why I think it's good to try different methods and to really develop one's connection with the universe. And that might include, first of all, finding how many guides are with you today or which guides are with you today for this issue or in other words we are connected if we want to be connected and this is a respectful relationship we have with the universe so i don't approach this as a scientific test of these spirit guides i trust them and if they tell me uh something uh and i'm anxious Anxiety, fear will interfere. If I'm anxious or I'm put on the spot or somebody wants me to tell them something, you know, I can get into performance anxiety and then I don't get good information. But I've worked on my performance anxiety because I do believe that we are growing in our own path in the universe, much like the Fibonacci ratio spiral I think our own selves, our own soul is growing in, in that uh, same way that all plants, the galaxies, the water that comes out of our um, a faucet. Uh, there is 
each of us has our own growth process. And I think when we have issues that interfere, like it could be, I want this answer right now. Forget it. Because it just right, right, or you've got way. a bias. Something is a little too. I I can tell with you know sometimes this pendulum dowsing. If you really want to know something and you 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 can't, sometimes I have to ask someone else to do blind dowsing or whatever for me. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think that one of the things that happens as we work on all of this is that for me, I've gotten in touch with so many of those beliefs and the triggers. I would say that the triggers are, are one of the things that we really need to pay attention to and, and douse on those when we're in a trigger. Do I need to know more? Do I need to really work on this issue? Because can you give more, we are growing. Can you give an example of a trigger? Just kind of explain that for, for okay. our audience. Let's say that I go to some kind of an event and somebody just bugs the heck out of me and they talk and I want to just choke them. I mean, it's just really aggravates me and I go away from there and I'm thinking, oh, that person is just, ugh. And, um, and all of a sudden I say, do I have issues? with blocks on this? Do I need to do some of my own work on an assumption I have about this, whatever they said? Um, but I've found that the word trigger, most people do relate to that. They understand being triggered. Or, uh, and, it, and it's usually when we get triggered, we either look internally to see what's bothering us or we blame the other person. They did it to us. They triggered us. No, they didn't trigger us. Our own issues triggered us. And when we can look at that, and that's, that's a lot of my work now. I work with people individually. Sometimes I do workshops on that because that is the, the way I believe we grow. And the essence of those triggers goes back to Sanskrit in the word soul scars. It's how we carry our traumas. It is that place in us that is wanting to work through issues, but we haven't done it yet. Um, does that help in any way? Yeah, um, I am not seeing any questions on that. So I think uh, we're, we're good. Someone was asking for more about your clapping. That's just your very enthusiastic yes for you. Yes. I might be listening to somebody saying something uh, that is just so super right and right on for the moment. And I will just say, I'm getting hands clapping. And it's, you know, it's just my way of saying, yes, I'm getting that this is really important. Yeah. yeah. I don't do it a lot, but it's, it's a fun thing to do when you're talking with someone. Um, Susie says samskara. Yeah. So that's what you're talking about. The soul scar, yes. samskara. Yeah. Yes. It's uh, called samskara in, in the Sanskrit. It's also called shenpa, S-H-E-N-P-A uh, in Buddhist, uh, at least Tibetan Buddhist theory. So these, these ideas are not new. And, and there's a practice connected and especially many in the Buddhist tradition believe that they really deal with their triggers primarily through meditation. And I know many dowsers that deal with their triggers through using a pendulum and going into the energy of that and then asking that it be cleared Right. And I know um, emotion code does kind of along those lines. And someone mm -hmm. had mentioned that earlier. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see, we have a question. Um, can you elaborate if you know on samskara versus karma? Uh, when I've doused on it, I get they're not the same. And I don't specialize in karma. So I can't tell you why they're different. Uh, 
what I do know about um, the, the scars, the soul scars, is that they seem to be totally associated with trauma. Uh, for instance, whenever you go into the energy, and we could do that right now, for those of you who have, have um, a pendulum, if you can uh, think of something that really is troubling to you and just ask to see the energy of that. Why don't we just do that for a second? Okay. Take okay. something, don't try to intellectualize it. Don't try to make it an emotion necessarily because this is not emotion code. Um, our emotions come from the blocked energy. So they're a manifestation of blocked energy, fight, flight, or frozen. This is all fight, flight, or frozen energy that we carry with us from early days, past lives, as well as this life or when we were younger. And so just ask to be shown what the blocked energy looks like and just see what happens with your pendulum. Okay, well, well that's not a and yes then, or no question. And then ask that it be cleared and balanced and brought to the way it needs to be for your highest and best good. This is a straightforward way of doing work on one block. And usually our blocks are arranged in kind of an issue thread. Okay, so would you um, just repeat that process one more time? Just Yes. To, just First of all, you surround yourself with the presence of that loving transformative energy. You don't do this by yourself because you want to give that energy to the universe, not demand it, give it, ask that it be taken. It's a request and a thank you for gratitude. So you go into one, surround yourself with the presence, ask that you be shown the blocked energy and just watch it. It, it will either stand still or it will go kind of angry, weird. And then you, as soon as you're really fully in it, you ask that it be taken with a thank you. Please take it, thank you. And you let that pendulum swing until it stops. Interesting. Okay. Now you can do the same thing with a pen and pencil using the pencil like you would use the um, pendulum. And this is literally, you just, I call it the squiggle. And you just put pen to paper and ask to be shown the blocked energy on that particular issue. And then just let your pen either dig into the paper and not move, which is the frozen, or it goes wild in some crazy pattern. And then you say, please take it, thank you. And the minute you say, please take it, thank you, the squiggle changes. Uh, I really wasn't planning on getting into this. I'd be happy to come back and do a whole session on it. Um, I think it's the most uh, doing this in different patterns, different ways, is extremely freeing and growth love, producing. Yeah, I, I love all the different um, techniques and modalities, right? <laughs> it's great tools to have in a tool bag. Um, there's a question, would you explain how to work on anxiety performance? Yes. That would take some time because anxiety is a word for fear. Anxiety takes us into a more beta state. 
And um, there are so many ways of dealing with anxiety. And it really requires asking, do I have issues related to this particular anxiety that I need to work on now? So that's literally the essence of the Lodestar work that I do. And uh, if you want to put my phone number in the chat, um, or I guess I could put it in myself, I would be happy to work with someone on their anxiety issues, but they are, you know, it isn't like one size fits all with anxiety. There's anxiety about like performance anxiety when you're speaking in front of a group, there's um, all kinds of anxieties. And then there's generalized anxiety when we don't even know what it's about. Uh, I'll put my phone number in there. Yeah, and I think your contact information is also on the, um, it'll go out on the recording and they, they can contact you through your website, right? Um, the, I, I believe the Earthwater Alliance mm -hmm. um, org. So um, yeah, so you do private sessions and right. um, do you offer classes, Amelia? Periodically, yes. Okay. I don't have any schedule right now, but yes, I do. Okay, fantastic. So um, do you have an email list or how, how do you like people? I would like- How do you let people know what you're doing? <laughs> okay, I would like, yes. If, if anybody wants to send me a link to their email, some of you I, I already have. Um, uh, Idaho Dowsers, plural. Dowsers, not Dowser. Idaho Dowsers at gmail.com is probably the best email okay. for me. This in here. Idaho. And so I guess I should put that in there too. Um, I'll put it in there for you. Um, Idaho Dowsers um, at gmail. Right. There's an, the reason I emphasize the plural is that there is an Idaho Dowser in Idaho that is singular. And so he just doesn't have the S on his. Okay, I thought I sent that to everybody, but I did not. Um, anyhow, the uh, I'll do that again. Um, and Kelly is saying, um, <laughs> you're gonna have to come back and, and do some more of this for folks. People are excited. And yes, uh, this is being recorded. And if you had signed up on the email list, you got the notification and we'll definitely be sending out uh, the recording to everybody. So, so where, where are we in your... Um... I think I am, I, you know, I'm ready to wrap it up if, if you would like. It looks like we're about at the end of the hour. Yeah, well, we can go to 8.30 if we need to. That's um, kind of our, our window, but um, let's see if we have any questions. Or if you have any um, uh, anything else that... Uh... So I, I think when I douse, you know, I've always felt like that that's um, my higher self, that it is, you know, it is, it's me, um, the, I guess the, the higher universal me that is connected um, versus like some guide or something really outside myself. Um, so that's interesting. I, I guess, I guess we can just ask when we're dowsing. You know? <laughs> exactly. Uh, sometimes it is my higher self that's talking to me. Uh, sometimes it's mother earth. Sometimes it's a plant. When I'm saying to a plant, do you need water? I'm going to get the answer from the plant. Mm -hmm. So it's about communicating with the universe in a way that is relevant to each of our lives. And, uh, if you own a cat, you may want to ask the cat some questions. Uh, you know, uh, if you own a dog, you would probably have lots of questions for a dog. Dogs love to communicate with us uh, from, I mean, it's amazing. I mean, it brings the whole world into a different perspective when we can really truly listen to any 
anything we're supposed to be listening to at the time. Well, and I guess if you're dowsing for water or oil or ley lines, I mean, you're really having a conversation with the earth, right? I mean, it's right. communication with, um, with the earth. Yeah, that's, that's a very interesting way to look at that. I, I like that. I just like to think about it as a dialogue. Who are we mm -hmm. talking to? What are we asking? What do we need to know uh, to make their life better? Mm -hmm. um, and that's what you find so much of in indigenous cultures is this listening on these deeper levels. Well, right, we get so busy. We, we're, not everybody is, um, slows down and attunes to listening, but it's a powerful experience. Okay, we have a couple questions here. One is, what's one thing I can do to open to my higher self? Are you a dowser? Do you have methods of asking that? I'll give her a, a second to um, respond. But yeah, I would think. Because um, all, all I would do is say, does my higher self want to talk to me now? Mm -hmm. Yes, no. Um, what do I need to know if I get a yes? I mean, there are so many good chart books out there where you can get your higher self to tell you many, many things about your contracts. Um, so again, it's a dialogue. So what, what book, I'm not familiar with a, a book that would do that. What can you remember the well, name? Well, one of the thing, one of the books that I've really liked is the Dale Olson chart books. Um, I can't think of it. It's, getting to know your intuition or some title like that mm -hmm. you you know he's he i mean that chart book is very detailed and if you're in the uh healing world the wellness world uh he's even got more specific charts but you can go on the internet and look for charts dowsing charts Mm -hmm. um, and you'll find, and then just do it with your pendulum or do it with your muscle testing or your galvanic skin response. Do I need this? Yes, mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. and, so Dale Olson, O-L-S-O-N? Yes. Okay, um, chart books. Yeah, so that, that would be good to know. And thank you. Then we have someone um, that is having, um, can you speak to surgery for gallbladder removal? So what, so what would be good questions to ask in that? Well, first of all, <laughs> if my doctor told me I needed to have it removed, the first thing I would do is I would ask the universe to please guide me about this. And um, I would set aside some time when I could really be in, in, Come, I wouldn't try to ask this on the fly at all. I would try to be really very uh, focused and uh, willing to listen. And then I would ask, one of the questions I would ask is, do I need more information about that surgery? Do I need to know more information about clearing? Um, do, do I need to go to a different uh, specialist? Um, I would ask every question I, that was rolling around in my mind. And I would ask um, if there's something I need to pay attention to on the internet. Uh, so I do a lot of internet searching. I would inform myself really as much as I could about the pros and cons and what other alternatives there are. Um, I, I have a, my own method, which is on a scale from one to five, and I only go forward with fives. I don't go forward with yeses and nos. I go forward with fives. So in other words, I would say, 
please rate this physician that wants to operate on me on a scale from zero to five. And I would say zero, one, two, three. Oh, I got a three. Okay. Not good enough for me. So I, I get real precise about medical. And then stuff. maybe you'd ask, you know, um, is there another question about this physician I need to ask? Um, or, or do I need more information about this particular um, doctor? Or, you know, you can just all keep, of it, all, all of it. And, yes, everything. Because I don't, you know, I'm 80 now, and I've got some health issues. And, and some of them are complicated. This one, one of them is complicated, the rest isn't. But one of them is complicated in terms of medications. And I'm in a very involved discussion with three different doctors, one in at Mayo Clinic, one in Idaho, and one in California. <laughs> and, uh, you know, some of this stuff is complicated. And for me, I trust that I'm going to be guided. I trust and sometimes I don't know the whole deal and I'm not supposed to. And I just trust that I will get there with what medication I'm supposed to use next and when. And, uh, and the same thing with surgery. If I get a no, I don't do it. If, I, if, I, if it's a three as opposed to a five, I don't do it. So that's yeah. how I work with mine is I get real precise. How important is this? Zero, one, two, three, four. Five. If it's a five, I go with it. I was doing a, uh, a workshop in Montana one time and I shared my one, two, three, four, five process, which I developed after I had purchased so many items from the store with a yes and a no. And this one guy said, you know, I think our storage units are full of fours. And I thought that was a really good way of conceptualizing that there's you know, we're, we're on a path and we're in a force field and we want to stay in the, you know, the fast lane. We don't want to get sidetracked. And that requires a lot of questions and, and a lot of trust. Okay. So if, for example, if I'm in a store and I see a sweater that I like, um, how would I, um, do I have to set, um, you know how you can have your, um, what, yeah, how, how do you, how would you proceed? Just walk me through exactly that process. Okay, if I saw you something I liked, well, first of all, before I went in the store, I'd probably ask, are there any fives here? Oh. Because, you know, there's so, I mean, the advertising world has so many thought forms. Did buy, you buy, calibrate buy, buy. yourself and your pendulum or whatever for one through five, five being um, optimal, fabulous? Like how did, how do you qualify? How the, you five qualify is divine, the five is divine will and timing for me. Okay. I'm connected. I'm committed to following guidance. And so I don't, and, and many dowsers have different methods, but that's, that's mine. That's I'm percent. here on this planet at this time because I chose to do certain things in terms of my own contracts, in terms of how I'm supposed to be, be how I'm supposed to be growing. And I, my commitment is to follow that divine will and timing. And that's the five. Did you ask, um, before you agreed to do this um, interview tonight that, uh, did you ask a one through five, was, is this a five or a? This was a five. This was a and five. I said, why is it a five on today when I'm taking care of my eight I know, cause you questioned the date a couple of times. And, I know. And, and I could tell like, that you must've had an internal, you know, yeah. pretty strong yes, so. Yeah. I don't know why, you know, it yeah. is what it is. Right, right. So, well, we're covering some amazing material. Um, I'm going to just add a couple of things that if I was going to have gallbladder surgery and I got a five, um, you know, you can always clear 
your energy, clear the energy of the hospital space, right? With your medical team, um, you know, with everything associated with that. Um, yes. You want to really set the tone and energy for the space and the process and your recovery time and, and all of that. So those are all tools that, you know, we have, um, especially as dowsers. Yes, absolutely. I think the more you can clear and balance and, uh, and first of all, find out when, I mean, I, another thing that I do besides my scale from one to five is I ask when days, weeks, months, years, when days, weeks, months, years. And when I get the answer to that, if it's weeks, I say, how many weeks? Zero, one, two, three, four. Um, so I'm, I'm doing this precision intuition on all of the aspects of it. And, and uh, I've had some interesting experiences um, with clearing the energy in surgery, surgical rooms. Yeah, Michelle's it, it, saying I that think she it's had really important. A great, um, well, sure. Um, she did that for her husband a few years ago and it worked out fabulously. Right, because you don't know what maybe he I don't know how a traffic jam or flat tire or something that morning and he's stressed and you want to clear that energy so he can focus on you as the priority in this procedure and that he's fully you know um and optimally available to do the best possible job yeah and um and it was really interesting I had cataract surgery a couple of years ago and uh I chose not to use an anesthetic, but to do self-hypnosis. And the doctor was fine with that. Uh, but the first one that he did, because I had both eyes done over a period of several weeks, the first one they did, he was playing this music that would take anybody out of alpha into beta. It was just like, you know, and and it was really hard to stay down and stay relaxed. And so the next time I said, would you let me, can I give, send you my music? Which was some flute music that was really soothing. <laughs> it worked much better the second time. So it's really good to think through any surgery in, in terms of uh, the balancing of the people in that room, the timing, it may not be good one week and better the next. Yeah. That's great. Okay. So your precision, so you've, you've got your five, you know, are there any fives in the store, you know, or, and then if you have something that's a, a timing, you know, when days, weeks, months, or years, and then how many, um, what's another example of precision that you, and think of kind of just narrowing it down well the the question would be do i need to narrow this down more do i need uh -huh. more information do i need to wait will i get what i need later uh the other thing that i often do is i will say when i get up in the morning i will say uh do i need to pay attention to that dream um are there messages for me in this house? Yes. Oh, okay. How many? Zero, one, two, three. Three messages. All right. What do I need to pay attention to? Where are the messages? Are they in these uh, cards? Uh, are they in a book? Um, and so it's always a QA. and a And, um, you know, it may very well be the dictionary. But if I don't ask, I'm not going to know. And that's what guides me to a lot of the specific information. Wow, that's very interesting. I guess if someone were applying it to work, um, you know, um, uh, is this the best project from, you know, if you had a whole list of tasks, um, is this the best project for me to work on 
today, you know, would you do something like that? I'm thinking what I would say is how many projects do you want me to work on today? Okay. And the you could be my higher self it, or it could be a particular team that I work with because I work with a lot of different teams that are specializing in different things. Um, so, but do you want, how many, how many do you want me to work on today? Mm -hmm. Zero, one, two, three, four. Okay. Then I'd lay them out or I'd write them out. I do, you know, a, a journaling kind of message where I got very clearly it was three, for instance, mm -hmm. and then I'd write down which ones they were. And they're usually given to me in the order that I would need to pay attention to them. And I guess somebody could say that for, um, for their body, right. Um, about food to eat or, oh, yes. you know, and how do you, how do you ask your body about, um, movement, right. Exercise. Like what, how would you formulate a question like that? Do I need to go walking today? Do I need to do blah, blah. The body responds to needs. The body wants to tell us what we need. Okay. And if we're addicted to something like caffeine, our body will say when we need caffeine. Um, but if we say, like I did this morning, do I need any B, B vitamins? Yes. Okay. So I do all my supplements that way. And I, I'm guessing a lot of dowsers do, but you can hold the supplement or you can just ask. I just run my hand over how many of these do I need today? Zero, one, two, or I'll just touch it and say, do I need this, this, this? It, you know, it's a conversation with my body saying what it needs. Do I need to get hydrated? Yes, soon I need to have some water. Um, because in Chinese medicine, there is, um, flowing chi, and there is sha, which is blocked energy in the body. And it's really important to know, and for instance, the, my first introduction to dowsing was a woman who told me that she was going to douse on a scale from one to 10 and how all my body organs were functioning. And it was the first time in my life I'd ever been introduced to a dowser. And it was the first time in my life I'd ever been scanned. And I was scanned and I felt it in my body as she went through, well, your kidneys are functioning at this, this is functioning at that. And uh, your lymph system is so overloaded, I can't even get a number on it. And that was my beginning of understanding that our body is calling out to us. I had frozen shoulder. And I had to have a conversation with my body where it was gestalt, where my shoulder said, I'm Amelia's shoulder, I'm Amy's shoulder. And I'm so sick and tired of her slinging her purse over my shoulder. And I said, I am so sorry, I won't do it anymore. So, you know, these conversations can get quite robust with different body organs, different illnesses. The possibilities are endless. That's they amazing. Are. Yeah. Yeah. And the beauty of it is, is that because we are connected to the universe, these ideas float by us and we need to double check if that was our idea or if that was a creative idea coming from the universe. Because these ideas do float by. They're trying to help us. Right. Then, yeah, I guess if it does float by, then tune in and ask more questions. Yes. I love the, the, the galvanized um, finger thumb. That's so easy because <laughs> you're right. It absolutely gets sticky when um, something's a no or not true. Um, and it's pretty smooth uh, if it does. I have a friend who worked in the corporate world and, you know, she was doing that work under the table. Mm -hmm. Do I need to speak now? Mm -hmm. Do I need to vote? No. Do I need to say more? 
uh, and nobody knew anything she was doing because it was just very, one hand. Very interesting. Well, I am um, going to be traveling soon, and I'm just trying to think of what what questions do I need to ask. Um, you know, I guess in the airport on the airplane. Um, I mean, well, I, I is might... it a five for you to take that plane, or is it a five for you to change your schedule? Do you need to take any essential oil that? smells fairly decent that you can put in your mask so you're not breathing in any uh, viruses of any kind uh, or bacteria um, on that plane. Cause you know, I mean, it's wide open and how do you pack? Is it a, you know, what do I need to pack? And run through your closet and pack intuitively. It's great. It tells you so much about your trip. <laughs> so it's not necessarily um body what would we like to wear it's really more what um what do you what say is, is is this a five um for me um to take this blouse on the trip yes is is it for, you... or you could say for the highest and best good um but i find it fascinating because different trips for me different colors stand out and when I took the intuition, the science uh, of intuition with Caroline Mace, um, she basically said, we're wearing our colors for other people. So, you know, you don't know why, you're, why it's important to take something. Uh, one of our famous dowsers, and I, I will just keep the name confidential, but she said to me, you know, I kept getting, I was supposed to take this coat and I just couldn't believe it because the weather seemed so warm. And she said, I got there and I nearly froze to death. I should have listened. <laughs> and, you know, so it's that kind of thing that is mm -hmm. it's fun, make it fun. Well, this has been amazing and um, I'm so grateful. Okay, we'll just go through one more time. Does anybody have a question for um, Amelia? Any kind of a last. Uh... I think there's some really great comments uh, and I'm saving the file. You all know how to save the file in the chat room. There's a few dots right over on the very side and you can click on those three dots and it will literally say save chat. Oh. So you may want to do that. Okay. Oh, and here we have, thank you so much, Amelia, for your teaching. It's very helpful. And thank me. Okay, well, you're welcome. <laughs> yes. Um, all right. Well, I guess um, we'll just get this recorded and um, send it out to our group. And I'll share that with you if you have anyone that you'd like to, to share it with. This has been amazing. And I'm, I just feel so grateful for your sharing your wisdom and your your knowledge and your experience with us i've i've learned a few new things tonight and you're a, <laughs> and that's the fun part about staying connected isn't it we are the universe experiencing itself there is only separation in the mind the heart knows all be present i love that yeah yeah okay well um i hope you have a wonderful rest of your trip, um, Amelia, and um, wishing everyone, um, let's see, good health and <laughs> like good health and good fortune. How about that? So, and um, use your tools, use your tools. So, all right. Thank you, Mary. Thank you so much.